Hello guys, welcome back to chapter 7 and 8 of B Big Nate Flip Cell. Let me tell you a funny story real quick. I read read chapter 5 and 6. Anyway, here we go. Chapter 7. What a ripoff, I grumble. As we leave Uncle Pedro's, all he did was a cheesy car trick. What next, balloon sculptures? You don't feel any different, Dee Dee asked. Not a bit, I snort. And by the way, your glasses are filthy. Oh, Teddy, look out. And you almost stepped in that puddle. You almost stepped in that puddle. Teddy frowned. Since we are since we are afraid of a puddle, I'm not afraid of it, doofus, I answered. I just noticed it's that's all. So stop, shoot. I just noticed something too. Spurch A. Hey, are you crazy, Dee Dee? I shout angrily. You just ruined my shirt. No, I just proved a point, she said, grinning, like a the village idiot. Whatever Uncle Pedro whatever Uncle Pedro did worked. Whatever whatever Uncle Pedro did worked. You're neat. Neat open your eyes. I'm a mess. Thanks to you and your little mud ball attack, I growl. Now I have to change into clean clothes. Whoa whoa, you never cared about clean clothes. Before Teddy exclaims, I think Dee Dee's right. You're hypnotized. And we need to make sure of it, Dee Dee announces. Let's do another test. No more mud bowls, I say quietly. Mud is dirty. Is mud is so dirty. I've got it. Look, Mrs. McTeague's lawn. Mrs. McTeague is a total whack job about his lawn. No, it's a total whack a job. A Mrs. McTeague, Mr. McTeague is a total wag job about his lawn. No, wait, he's a total wag job, period. What else do you call a guy who dig crabgrass out of his yard with a pair of eye tweezers? Mrs. Mr. McTeague, notable quote, ride your bike across my lawn again and I'll call you, I'll call the police, you punks. Teddy sweeps his arm across the bright green grass. It's period, don't you think? I mean, it's per perfect, don't you think? Well, not exactly. Maybe I just never looked at Mrs. Mr. McTeague's lawn all that carefully before, but I am now. It's definitely got issues. The grass around that tree trunk is, isn't evenly trimmed. The spot in the corner is a darker shade of green than the rest of the lawn. Their acorns, <coughs> their acorns over there look sort of random. Do you do you really just say that acorns are messy? Teddy asked in belief. I'm just pointing out that they could be a little more organized. I exclaim. Dee Dee's hoping up, hopping up and down like a frog on a pogo stick. Urk, that that proves it. You're just, you're like a different person. I'm going to spread the word that there's a new Nate on the scene. Wow, I say as Dee Dee goes skipping away. Somebody's perfect, somebody's pretty fired up about this. Well, aren't you, Teddy asked. I'm not sure being hypnotized is a little weird. I feel like I'm wearing something else's underwear. And speaking of underwear, I've been wearing the same pair of tidy whitey since this morning. That's gross. Note to self, bring back a pair bring back pair of undies to school tomorrow. Dad's burning something on the stove and I walk through the kitchen. Hi Nate, want a snack? Super supper won't be ready for a while. No things. I've got some work to do in my room. Homework? Nope. No homework tonight. I've got something more important to do. A couple hours later, Dad knocks on my door. Nate, supper's almost. Cow, what? Dad's slips starts moving, but no sound comes out. Either he doesn't know what to say, or he just want a scholarship to mind school. You, 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 you cleaned your room, he finally stammers. 
Brilliant observation, Dad. Yeah, I tell him. How? Why? With my hands, because it was messy, I exclaim. I explain. Gotta love these father-son chats, they're so deep. Downstairs at the supper table, Alan continues to sparkling conversation. Sparkling conversation. Okay, out with it. What's your problem? Besides any and besides any annoying big sister, you mean? I ask. You've got your napkin in your lap for once. She says, you haven't spelled anything yet, and you're actually chewing your food instead of wearing it. It's called self-improvement, Alan, a, co a concept you're obviously too brain-dead to understand. You know what I think Dad announces in that fake happy voice he uses whenever he's trying to keep Alan and me from killing each other? I think we should make some hot fudge sundaes. Okay. Oh, yay! I didn't say okay. I said, oh, yay. God darn it. <coughs> no thanks, I said as I put my dishes in the sink and head upstairs. Too messy. Later, Dad pokes his head in my room. What's this? I thought you didn't have any homework. I don't, I tell him. I'm just rewriting my notes for social studies. He sat on my bed, which totally messes up the blanket, but whatever, I'll, but whatever, I'll fix it later. So if this isn't something Mrs. Godfrey told you to do, he asks as one of his eyebrows heads north. No, I just wanted to make them neater. See, here's what they look like before. And here's what they look like now. Good gravy. Class note, st social studies. Frank, Nate Wright, Fr Franklin Pierce, fourteenth president of U.S. Born no November twenty third, eighteen o four, Hillsborough, N.H. Parents Anna Kendrick and Benjamin Pierce, governor of N.H. Eighteen twenty four graduates from Bolden College. Eighteen twenty nine, elected to N.H. legislature. Become Speaker in 1831. 1833, elected to U.S. House of Reps. Representative, basically. That's what Reps means. 1837, begins first term as, se as Senator. President election of 1852. Beg Franklin Pierce, Democrat, versus Wingfield Scott, W.I.G. I don't know what that is. 50% pop popular vote, 44. 254 call, wait, 50 percent popular vote 44 percent 254 college electoral 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 college 42 pierce pres presidency support for candace N nebraska act makes him unpopular in north i stand manifesto published dad's hands on my Dad hands me back my notes. He's got the weirdest expression on his face. It's like half worried, half gassy. Nate, is there anything you want to tell me? Um, okay, here's where things get kind of dicey. I'm sure Daddy might. I'm sure Dad wouldn't be too happy about me. Get, wouldn't be too happy about me getting hypnotized. So I can't tell him why I've turned into Joe Tidy. And if he finds out a camera disappeared from my locker, he's going to call the school. You never want a parent to call the school, so I lie. No. Dad gives me the squint. He probably knows there's more to the story, but what can he do? Growl me for being too neat? Well, all right then. Why don't you get sleep, Nate? It's getting late. Can I stay up and draw comics for a while, I ask? Sort of as a reward for cleaning my room without being asked? He smiles. I suppose a miracle like that buys you some drawing time. But only h half an hour, Nate. It's a school night. Thanks, Dad, I tell him. Then I jump into a brand new lukewarm private eye adventure. Lights out. What? You said I have half an hour. Dad taps his watch. That was a half hour. But I haven't even started drawing yet. I barely finished measuring all the panels. Measuring them? I've never seen you draw comics using a ruler. When did that, when did that start? Um... I fell around for a good answer. I just, I wanted all the panels to look nice and straight, I said weakly. Dad peers down at my notebook. Well, they certainly ha are nice and straight, he says, and empty. Sleep tight. Chapter 8 The sun, the sun's bare, 
barely up when I leave for school the next morning. I need to get there early so I can clean my locker. Well, oops, sorry. He doesn't look very sorry if you ask me, but I'm so happy to see Francis. I don't even mind getting clocked in the face by the Daily Courier. Francis, how come you're delivering newspapers? He doesn't look at me. He won't even slow down. I need the money, he says. I have to buy a camera. A hot wave of guilt washes over me, even though I have nothing to feel guilty about because I didn't lose that stinking camera. I guess I could chase after Francis and tell him that again, or I could tell him that he doesn't need to pay by the school a new camera, that I'll pay for it I have if I have to. Except I won't have to once I prove that Randy took it. Then maybe Francis and I can be friends again. The school's pretty empty when I get there, and you know what? It looks good this early. It's so neat and tidy. Nate, why are you? Do what are you doing here at seven a.m.? Mrs. Hick Hicks Hickson eyes me suspiciously, which makes sense. I guess I'm usually here an an hour after school, not an hour before. If you get my drift, I want to clean my locker before homeroom. I answer. Oh, that reminds me. I found these overdue library books in my room last night. Hickey looks like she might kiss me. She w doesn't. Phew. My goodness, Nate, this is wonderful. She gushes. I assume you've lost all these. No, nope, by tower, I have never lose this stuff. Because I never throw away any. I don't throw anything away. Or at least I never used to, but now that, or at least I never used to, but now that I've been hypnotized, I'm really starting to send most of what's in my locker straight to Dump City. Skish. Ugh. Oh, it takes me almost 45 minutes, but what a disgusting job. You wouldn't believe all the stuff that comes out of there. Locker inventory, not on a complete list. 13 pairs of unwashed socks, 3 molded and moldy plastic mouth guards, 27 pencils, 2 unfinished Dr. Says Pro comics, 49 jelly beans, one, ha one, half, one half rolled toilet paper, two wooden d dum drumsticks, two chicken drumsticks, 12.3 pounds of math homework, one volleyball deflated, one pair of Mr. Galvin's dentures, 16 empty cheese doodle bags, one Sabiro that, that the head of a lawn gnome, six one thirds cups of dirt, but hey, those are mine. Ouch. These are like all the things like it says on here about all like the items in there and then the people that they're talking about are on the side. There are the people is and then it's the stuff. I oops, I bumped that and it didn't hurt that much for me. And I won't even get into how it smelled. Francis was right. I was a slow Just the pigeon has landed. So what? Dee Dee, what are you doing? I'm a spy, Dee Dee says, like it's supposed to be obvious. It's supposed to be obvious. That's how we talk. This stork flies at midnight. The penguin has no feathers. See, I'm ready to be a secret agent. We're at a we're at it we're at a bird sanctuary, I say. No silly, she giggles. I'm gonna spy on Randy Bet make a Here's a suggestion, zero, zero 007, I whispered. Don't announce to the world who you're about to spy on. Got it, Dee Dee says a little sheepishly. From now on, I'll be low-key. Right, I'll believe it when I see it. Dee Dee's, all of, Dee Dee's about as low-key as a match in a fireworks factory. As, as low-key as a match in a fireworks factory. Oh, and don't forget, she calls over her shoulder. After school, we're uh, practicing for the trivia slam. My heart sinks. Oh, yeah, the trivia slam. I guess I should fill you in. The trivia slam is like the ultimate quiz. The questions could be anything, and the team, and the last team standing wins. It happens every year, and it's huge. But I won't be part of it now. Not be. I won't be part of it. Not now. I'm supposed to be on Francis' team, the factoid, the factoids, along with Teddy, Dee Dee, and Chad about talk about a trivia powerhouse. As soon as we put the group together, we knew we had the goods 
to knock off the defending champs, Gina's geniuses. But everything's changed. Now, how can I be on the team? And for a captain, our cap captain won't even talk to me. When the bell rings for show shoe studies, I'm still thinking about the trivia slam until Mrs. Garfrey gets everyone's attention. Notebook check. Translation. Get ready for Mrs. Godfrey to throw a kind of pishing fit if she thinks her notebook is too sloppy or too unorganized or too red on a normal day. A notebook check for me anyway is one way ticket to detention, but today's is not a normal day. Let's start with your notebook, Nate. Jump in Jiminy! Mrs. G Wait, I'll say it loud. Jump in Jiminy! Mrs. Godfrey's eyes look really, it looks Eyes look ready to pop out of their sockets as she flips through my notebook, staring at page after perfect page. No rips, no smudges, no food stains. Nate, what's gotten into you? Five minutes with Uncle Pedro, that's what. But I just shrugged my shoulders. I decided I wanted to be neater. That's all I say, honest enough. Well, the difference is like a light, is like night and day. Such a trans. A Tronner's round deserves an A double plus. An A double plus? How, holy cow! She's never given you one of those, has she, Gina? Shut up, jerk face, and tell me what's going on. You're up to something I can tell. Isn't she charming? And so friendly, too. There's no mystery, Gina. I've cleaned up my act. Act is right. You're faking. This is killing her. Doesn't it look like I'm faking? I asked. Get used to the new me, Gina. Neatness is now my way of and my is now my way of life. And speaking of neatness, how about wiping your nose? There's a gigantic booger hanging out of it, hanging off it, uh, hanging off it. Ha! That's me on. That's me one, Gina zero. And you want to know the best part? The rest of the day goes exactly the same way. In English, Mrs. Clark gives me extra credit for my phenomenal pen penmanship. In math, Mr. Staples, everybody my homework tells everybody my homework is the Mona Lisa of bar graphs. Even old fossil face is impressed. This lab report is also perfection. Us oh, shucks. Not too shabby, right? As I head for my lo locker after class, I realize something. I did not tell. I did not. I didn't. I didn't get yelled at at, at. I did not get yelled at today. Not even once. We knew it was easy to make. Te Who knew it was so happy to make teachers happy? Psst, Nate. Psst. Looks like Dee Dee's still not. Is still in not so secret agent mode. What's up? I ask as I turn the corner. The pigeon has almost landed, she whispers. Not this again. Try in English, Dee Dee. I tell her I can't speak spy. I followed Randy all day. You did? Yes, and I saw him showing something to his gang. Something he didn't want anyone else to see. Whisper, whisper. Ha ha, he he. Pretty suspicious, don't you think? I bet it was the camera. I'm seeing if I didn't skip a page, because I don't know okay, yet. I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, okay. That does sound kind of suspicious, I admit. I'm amazed that Dee Dee actually turned up some useful information. I've continued my invest- I'll continue my investigation tomorrow, she says. I've got another fabulous outfit planned. That's good. The ride of Dracula look- Look might not work two days in a row. Now come on, Nate, let's not keep our follow factoids waiting. My stomach drops off a cliff. You know what? I'm going to skip the trivia slam, Dee Dee. You guys will do fine without me. And Francis doesn't want me there anyway. Sure he does, Dee Dee. Chirps a little too quickly. Oh yeah, I muttered. Do you ask did you ask him? She gets a little fidgety. I I've seen that I've talked to him about it a couple times. Yes, she answers. Well, did he say it in his exact words? Uh, Dee Dee remembers nervously. He said that that he didn't care if you came or not. It's just what I thought. See ya. Nate, wait. <coughs> Francis didn't say you couldn't come. You just said, um, that he doesn't care. Yeah, I've heard you. 
the first time. I saw the little up in my throat and started home. They really, do, they really will do fine without me. The fat boys, I mean, they can beat anybody as long as they've got Francis. He's always been a trivia geek. Sigh. I come to the edge of the little woods. If I go to the left and stay on the sidewalk, I'll be home in ten minutes. When I go on the right, there's a shortcut through the woods that sh leads straight to my street. It's a little muddy sometimes, but it's fast. I'll go le out the left. I don't want to get my shoes dirty. That's it for chapters... Wait. Seven and eight? Five and six. Seven and eight. What? Wait a second. Was that not it? Wait a second. That was a lot, wasn't it? It was seven and eight. So that was six and seven. Wait, what? Okay, what is happening? I'll see you guys next video. Bye.